Both Native American and Aboriginal people are known to have used journey sticks as visual maps of the journeys that they've been on. Collecting objects along the way and tying them on in order, these sticks were then used to remember their journeys and also to tell the story of that journey to their family and friends on their return. At the moment, me and Dougie go on adventures every day, so I am going to share with you one of our journeys with the help of my journey stick. To make a journey stick, the first thing you'll need to do is find a good stick. And then the only other things you need are some wool or elastic bands or some string so you can tie objects on along the way and maybe some scissors. I find that taking a journey stick on a walk helps me to notice things. Sometimes I'll find nature treasures along the way and add those, but also it might be something that reminds me of a place or some wildlife I've seen or the weather or even just a texture that I liked. So we start our journey walking up the path from the house. There's a cherry tree along the way, so my first treasure are these unripened cherries, perhaps discarded by the birds. They don't look sweet enough to eat yet. Then I've tied some purple wool around my stick. This is to remind me of the giant thistle. It seems to be growing bigger and bigger every day. Next, Dougie takes me to the beach. There's no sand here, but plenty of beech trees. So I collect some beech mast to add to my stick. This is the case that the nuts come from. Along the way, I feel like I'm being watched. And sure enough, there's a deer peering at me from the field. And then I see a stick on the ground that looks like antlers. So I'll take that. Next, we come across a fallen limb of an oak tree. From here, I think it looks like a monster spider creeping into the field. On the ground nearby, I find two oak apples or galls. This is real treasure. It's made by a gall wasp. The adult female lays an egg in developing leaf buds and the larvae grows inside until it turns into a wasp. See this hole? This is where the little wasp leaves when it's ready. We walk through an avenue of birch. The silvery bark from this tree can be peeled off in papery layers and we use this at forest school as tinder for fire lighting. And who can resist walking past a feather without picking it up? Now we've reached a field of gold. I've tied some yellow string around to remind me of the butterclubs and there were so many different types of grasses. Dougie loves bounding through the long grass. I must remember to call him back before we get to that muddy pool. Too late. There's a nasty smell of rotting vegetation as he splashes round in here. So I'm going to take some of these dead leaves to remind me of the deathly smell. He'll need hosing down on our return. On our way back now, we pass some conifers. I have to pick up a pine cone. Almost home. We just have to tiptoe past the troll. I think this lichen looks like Troll's nasal hair, so I'll have some of that as my final treasure. We're back at the gate. We really enjoyed our walk today. Who needs a sat-nav? Why don't you try creating your own journey stick? It's a great way to remember and to tell the story of your adventures in nature. <laughs>